We have been celebrating National Hispanic Heritage Month here, and now one Latina woman in California is poised to make history for the second time this year. Second time in just a few months, really. California Supreme Court uh, Justice uh, Patricia Guerrero became the state's first Latina Supreme Court Justice. That happened this past March. Now she's been confirmed as the state's first Hispanic Chief Justice, pending an approval vote from California residents next month. And she is here now, the history maker herself, Justice Patricia Guerrero. Uh, Ma'am, it's so good to have you here with us. And we want to get clear about the process. They put you all through it out there, right? First, you got to be nominated by the governor. Then you have to be approved by a commission. And now the voters have to approve you. But uh, I don't want to call it a foregone conclusion. But the voters rarely reject a chief justice. So what, are you, what is your feeling now going into a, a election day? <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, good afternoon. It's such a pleasure to be here, and it really is an honor to have been nominated for this position. As you've indicated, I am the first Latina to serve on the California Supreme Court, um, so I am just thrilled by the prospect of being able to serve as a role model for others. What happens here? Uh, you say you're the first. We, we have a pipeline issue, uh, do we not? We, we, we don't have an, it's one thing to look at the numbers, the final numbers. But what do you see coming behind you as far as, as students, whether it's law students and, and lawyers and, and justices, what's our pipeline look like? You raise a, an excellent point, and um, yes, it's definitely, we've made great strides, but there's more improvement. And uh, the pipeline issue is something that we all are aware of and believe it's important um, for others to see that there really is a viable path towards this judiciary. And it starts in um, elementary school, mm -hmm. college, law school, and it's part of our outreach efforts. And I think we're also fortunate that Governors, uh, recent governors, including Governor Newsom, have really placed a priority on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so the numbers are improving, and um, we're all very happy for that. And Justice Guerrero, the, uh, the Brennan Center tells us that there are some 20 states that don't have a justice of color at all uh, on their Supreme Court. So why is it important? Look, representation is one thing, and to inspire another generation. But your experience, your background, your family, oftentimes we look at courts, they're not supposed to be partisan, right? They're supposed to just interpret the law and that is what it is. But still, why is that your experience, your family, your background, your history important as you apply the law? Uh, well, first, the, the Brennan Institute, the report also indicates that California, we're fortunate to have one of the most diverse Supreme Courts in the nation. And we truly are diverse in terms of race, gender, ethnicity, age, geography, uh, sexual orientation. And it is important, um, I believe, for us to have representation. And um, when you go into court, we settle the most important, significant matters that affect people's lives. So it's important for them to see really that we represent the communities and people like them. And so representation is important at all levels, including the judiciary. I think it's particularly important to remember also that about 90 to 95 percent of the cases that are heard throughout the United, United States are heard in state courts. So it's very important to have representation. And Justice Guerrero, your, your parents uh, immigrated to the U.S. from Mexico. Um, you, you're a history maker now. And you're about to make history on the verge of making history twice in a matter of months um, there in California. But uh, now have this right. your mom didn't get to see this. Um, your mom passed before you got to the court. What, what, and even when you made your, your speech, when you were nominated there um, and going to the court, you, you said you didn't mention your mom in your remarks until the very end because you didn't think you'd be able to make it through the rest of your speech. Um, what are your thoughts as you reflect now on about to be making history for a second time there in California? I constantly reflect on my parents and their sacrifices and their struggles. Um, my, my mother in particular, she's the strongest person I know. Mm. And in addition to that, she was kind and compassionate. And she really 
um, stressed education, but also the importance of helping other people. And because of her and because of my father, I have these opportunities. And so I'm, I'm always grateful and hope that she would be proud. And also, like her, I want to serve as a role model mm -hmm. to inspire future generations. You said strong, kind, compassionate to describe your mom. When you, uh, I say when, but uh, become officially the, uh, the Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court, what do you think your mom would say to you? I feel her in my heart. What she would say, I don't know that she would be surprised, but she's <laughs> always been supportive. I think that she would say to continue to follow my passions and to never lose sight of who I am and where I came from. Well, uh, California Supreme Court Justice Patricia Guerrero. Ma'am, thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, and congratulations on being a, a history maker twice in a matter of months uh, out there in California. Uh, but we certainly hope to see you down the road. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the morning on GMA.